For about as long as we've been on this planet, man's been fascinated with taking flight. Um, in the late 1800s, the United States government decided to put its money where its mouth is and gave the nation's premier scientist over a million dollars to build an airplane. He succeeded in building an airplane and launched it twice into the Potomac. A short while later, two bicycle mechanics built the world's first airplane and took flight. Now, this story illustrates an interesting competition between government subsidies and the free market as the true source of innovation. And the story is also the source of our tonight's real history. In the late 1800s, many Americans were wondering if American entrepreneurs could develop the first airplane. Congress got in the act and determined that maybe we should have a government subsidy to some expert who could help America become the first country that could fly. Professor Samuel Langley was one of the most highly regarded American scientists of the late 1800s. He was an astrophysicist, a renowned astronomer. He was head of the Smithsonian Institution. And so Langley was seen as being the man best able to contribute. He received a federal subsidy of over $1 million in today's money. Langley's mission was to develop the first manned aircraft. Once he received the subsidy, he went to work on his theory of aerodynamics. And the theory worked like this. He had a houseboat. He believed that if you catapulted the airplane out of that houseboat, almost like with a big rubber band, and flew it, you had the engine going, and then the pilot would be able to take it from there, and that would be the successful flight with that system. He invested his money in that system. His first attempt at flight was a disaster. Part of the airplane got entangled in the catapult device. Therefore, the airplane quickly went into the Potomac River. Langley, though, had enough money left to do one more flight. And a few months later, December 8th, 1903, Samuel Langley launched his second flight. His pilot had a compass sewn in on his trousers so that he would be able to guide the aircraft once it was in the air. With this flight, it was launched right out of the catapult. For a brief moment, the engines were going. However, it crashed again into the Potomac. The pilot almost drowned. One of the congressmen said after Langley's failed attempt, you can tell Langley the only thing he ever made fly was government money. The Boston Herald said Langley needed to turn his attention away from flying machines and concentrate on submarines. The New York Times said it's going to take the experts at least one million years before man will ever be able to fly. Langley had many friends in Congress, and he had many scientific friends who also helped him receive the subsidy. Alexander Graham Bell, for example, testified before Congress saying that Langley was the man. The successful experiment he had with a model airplane all suggested that he should receive the federal subsidy. After Langley's two failed flights, many of his friends suggested that he would be successful if he received more federal money. Langley was hoping to receive additional help. No more help from the federal government was forthcoming. Langley, it turned out, was not careful in governing the resources that they had at the Smithsonian. One of the people there embezzled 50,000 or so dollars, and that money caused some embarrassment for Samuel Langley. However, the same year, almost the same time that Langley received his subsidy, two bicycle mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, Orville Wright and Wilver Wright went out to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. It was isolated, it was lonely, they liked the wind patterns there. And they began some very isolated experiments with flying their own airplanes. Now they started with flying kites, they flew some gliders, and after a couple of years they began to experiment with the idea of putting an engine on an airplane. Now, they gave great attention to detail. They spent a little over $1,000 of their own money. They didn't have much. Orville Wright was a high school dropout. Wilbur Wright was a high school graduate. 
They built their own engine. They had great attention to detail. They needed a lightweight engine. And then also they had wings. They watched birds fly. And they had kind of adjustable wings, what they called wing warping. And they did this in order to capture as close as possible a flying machine that would be able to accomplish flight in the way that a bird could fly. On December 17, 1903, the Wright brothers successfully flew a manned aircraft. Once the Wright brothers had succeeded at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, they moved their operations back to Dayton, Ohio, their hometown, and they began successfully flying for greater distances. They perfected the flight. Uh, within one year, for example, they were able to fly five miles at one time. That same year, 1904, they offered their services to the United States government, but the War Department turned them down. The government had already spent, in today's dollars, over $1 million trying to subsidize Samuel Langley. They had two airplanes in the Potomac River to show for their investment. Many simply could not believe that two bicycle mechanics from Dayton, Ohio, had accomplished what Samuel Langley and all the experts were not able to accomplish. Therefore, the U.S. government turned down the Wright brothers. By 1905, the Wright brothers were able to fly 25 miles in an airplane. And at this point, it became widely recognized these guys could really fly a plane. It had been accomplished. The Wright brothers believed strongly in the profit motive. That's what was motivating them to do the flight. They wanted to make money because they believed that commercially you could have much success with an airplane as well as militarily. Samuel Langley was trying to give his gift to humanity, the development of an airplane, and to achieve the fame and recognition that went with it. The problem is that Samuel Langley was working with other people's money to achieve success for himself Ultimately, the Wright brothers were able to sell the first of several planes to the U.S. government, and the Wright brothers did become wealthy and prominent as the result of selling effective, commercially successful airplanes 